here we are at 914 Tackle uh, doing a service on a wonderfully designed half bale Felton Crosswind. Um, the later types had fibre gears which unfortunately do strip, but the early one, which can be denoted by its black colour, has all metal. These are bulletproof. Absolutely wonderful engineering. This one's a Spitfire. Um, which has basically had the paint removed because it's probably all tools we need. Chip. The tools that we need, well, always lighter fluid for cleaning purposes. One screwdriver does everything pretty much, but I've just uh, got a tiny pick screwdriver here for um, doing the worm gear. So first off, we'll check the end float in the reel, and there's quite a bit there. If you're going to take a reel apart like this and you don't know them then uh, it's a good idea to either video yourself doing it or take pictures uh, or even write it down if you haven't got a phone but all I'm doing now is, is adjusting the end float to make sure there's a tiny bit there and it's not loading any bearings or anything like that so that the fly rotates nice and freely um, and then you've got a locking nut there that locks up to the original one. I've tensioned it via this one and this one will just lock it. It doesn't have to be silly tight. All it has to do is to lock the flyer and make sure that it rotates nicely. It's a little bit of trial and error because when you do one up then the other one moves with it so, which is a bit of a pain in the backside. So you just got to get it right. Got to back that one off to do that one up to make that one go in the right position when it's locked off. And I think that's about right. Yeah, there's about a thou play there, thousandths of an inch, which will do it nicely. Proprietary cleaner is uh, not necessarily the brand, but uh, down by the worm. And then just give it a good old spin. Kitchen cloth always, just to pull everything out. And then we're on to the next process. Cotton bud's always a good thing. But if you haven't got a cotton bud, which I have, but it's not, it's in the kitchen there, so I'm not gonna break away from camera to, to go get one. Just turn a bit of kitchen hole inside out. Do exactly the same job. The rest of the, um, the rest of the lighter fluid will evaporate. Again, clean the shaft. I've already done this, but clean the shaft area inside there on the brass. Um, you know, there's many ways you can do it. Do the same thing if you wanted to, which I shall do because I haven't got any other means. Straight in. Not a lot in there because I've already done it. And then pick up a bit. And then again. So we're in that position. We've got the flyer in position, that's all good. We're looking good from that point of view. So the next thing is the gearing. Off the lay shaft. The oscillating shaft. Well it doesn't really oscillate on this one because it's a crosswind. But um so we'll be going in, again, that's already been cleaned. So we'll have a little bit of lube down there. Don't overdo it, because if you do, you'll make the reel stiff, but don't underdo it as well, which is a bit of a, a, bit of a strange thing to say. But And then you've got a hole in there for a screw. Speak up a little bit. So that holds the shaft in place. Don't need to over tighten it because it's only pinning the shaft it's, and it's a brass screw. So just be a little bit sensitive towards what's required. Yeah. Now you can see that the mechanism is rotating there nicely. So we'll put a little bit of lubrication on that. 
find these lithium. Grease is a very good. Don't need to drown it. But you know, the grease goes stiff. That's original grease there that I took out, which is very serviceable, but it does slow the reel down. This is the the absolute reason why I'm actually build rebuilding this because I felt it was a little bit stiff and that it could actually run a lot better with a little bit of work done. But there's not much that anybody has to do. So there we go. So that's nicely in place. Now, the next thing is the shaft, the drive shaft. So again, a little bit of lubrication, not too much. A lot of it will push out when we get the shaft in. And then shaft in. Which engages onto the worm. Again, a little bit of lubrication, not too much. Because it is this is metal on metal. The fibre ones, as I've mentioned before, the later Felton Crosswind number twos, had a big propensity for breaking that nylon gear and that nylon gear because the worm is still stayed as a brass. Well, there we go, we've got a nice, nice little action going on. You will hear that telltale straight cut because obviously, you know, we're talking two gears going straight cut, so you will hear that beautiful sound, but we're we're on we're on the road. Tiny bit of lubrication there. Make sure that you've got the the washer in place. Very important. Um, for longevity really and then we're in a position now where we'll just clean this up again same process um, you know I've done the interior already but I just noticed a little bit um, that's not anything to worry about but that is what would happen if at some point somebody hadn't got the correct washer in it now I put the correct washer in it because when I obtained this it hadn't got the correct washer in it and that is the result that you'll get because this boss there will rub. So that's just a little tip there. And uh, we're almost on. So again, not going too bad, you know, too 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 much with lubrication, a little bit on the shaft. And into place. Yeah. And then it's put me together time, really. Right, well we just had a customer in, so we had to stop filming. So picking up where we left off. Um, the main reel body is prepared now and lubricated. Uh, we're not far away from finishing it together. Now, with regards to this being a crosswind, basically if you look, you'll see that there's an elliptical movement when the reel's turned. Hence the line crisscrosses rather than goes in a straight line, which means it beds in, so it's ideal. These are basically designed for spinning, but you can have a really, really big fish on that pulls hard and your line doesn't bed in, which is great. Brilliant concept, brilliant idea. Uh, unfortunately, they never continued with it. Anyway, looking at this, brass gears again, you know, brilliant engineering. And what we've got here, we've got a little grub screw. You'd have to rotate to undo the grub screw. But I've done it now, you know, because they are difficult and we could have spent ages faffing around, but if you, you can probably just see it there, I don't know how good it's picking it up, but there's a little grub screw in there. Grub screw out, take it off, lubricate. If you can't do that, then the sensible solution is plenty of lighter fluid down there. Give it a good old spin, you'll get a bit of gray that comes out as it washes out, but you see that's nice and free running at the moment because it's completely dry. And what we'll do then is we'll just introduce a little bit of lube. Not too much, but we just want to lubricate the aluminum. You see, that's forced a little bit of lighter fluid out, but that'll, that'll sort itself out. And then we'll go around at 90 degrees to that, put a little bit more around. Yeah and then we'll rotate, and then we'll clean up. So, but we've got lubrication there on the, on the aluminium, which is what, essentially, is what we're looking for. Silicone, silicone will do, but, um, you know, that, that works. So, there we go. 
So now we'll look at getting this on. The bail arm. When when it's all put together, the bail arm will you you rotate, pull the bail arm back, and it will lock at that angle. It only locks in one place. So start getting that together. Again, cotton bud down there, you know, down the bottom, a little bit of lube on the shaft, you know, because this is your clutch and crosswind mechanism. And then we'll slide everything back in. Everything's locked in. And so now you can see the oscillation. This is this is how it works and it, this is how the crosswind works. But as I say, when you're putting the bail arm you, on, you would do this and then it, it sort of locks and, and locates there. It's always the same place, yeah, but you just have to get used to where it is. It's always the same on these wheels, always the same place, and there's your trip. So that's, that's how it basically works. Uh, another thing of note, these handles, the later type had a folding handle, um, a lot bigger than this, and they're all very nice. They fold up nicely and everything, but they do get a lot of play because they're only made of aluminium much prefer these very very robust but these are on the older versions you can sometimes find the odd one kicking about somewhere and change it over but that's why i like these so much um, these early wheels but they are they are harder to come by than the fault felt and cross wine number two um, i mean essentially these are a felt and cross wine number two but they're the early version so you know and there we go so got that this has been Depainted, it came to me like that, which is commonly known as a Spitfire. I'm building this actually for a client because I've literally just sold it halfway through putting it together. So, um, Ross, this you'll see this when, when I can get that screw in. Put that one in first, I think. Um, you'll see that this wheel, this is this is yours. My dad's just been in, and I did try to ring you, but you weren't picking up. So anyway, we've got a little bit of foam going on, and when it's done, so later on this afternoon, I'll be dropping it around to you. So, use a right screwdriver for the job, that was only loose just to put things together with a small screwdriver. No need to go over the top to tighten everything up. Okay, now we're in a, we're in a good position. Yeah. So now, handle. Well, as Ross is a, a lefty, Got the handle. Oh, it's a small one. That's it. Okay, no need to go mad. Need to do the screw up. Right, so we've got a nice little action on the cross line going on now. So we'll put the Get the bail arm out of the way. Put the spool on. So again, a little bit of lube because you do want the clutch that works. You don't want too much lube on it because you don't want to stiffen it up too much, but just a little bit. And then we've got to start putting the other associated parts in, which happens to be this little locator, which locates the spindle through the slot there can be a bit of a bit of an awkward job and it might go well or I might look a chump oh it's gone well well that was very fortuitous <laughs> that was not skill that was more by luck than judgment but there you go it's in or it will be um, they can be a little bit tight to get in don't worry just a nice bit of patience bit of gentle it went in so it will it will come out although actually no I am a chump because it needs to be the other way around. So I've got to get that into position. Okay, I wonder if it will go well this time. Goodness me. Almost. Wow, that's that's amazing. Well, that's twice. Well, and then this 
goes on, but I've noticed, and this has been to bits obviously because it's 70 old, 70 odd years old, this room. It's not been ruined badly, but there's a few turnovers that you can see um, on the screw, so let, let's just fix it, why not? A um, little bit coarser than I'd want to be with this, but all I do, gentle bit of movement, just to take the burrs off, just because. Wet and dry would be even better. But um, just take the worst of the burrs off that way. You see, they're starting to show now, so you can see that it's been done. Uh, been apart more than once. Um, but that's good because it's been serviced and it's been taken care of. So now we're looking good. And then finish it off. You could recut a groove if it has got damage. This one's very, very good, so it hasn't. Um, and just tease the rest out. So, uh, wet and dry is my preferred method, but I can't believe we haven't got any in here, but I had some in my hand at home last night. Right, and then there we go. We're looking, we're looking good on that. Um, that's taken care of. And then, again, it sits at an angle, so don't try and put it on vertically. Just remember, if it doesn't go together, it's, there's something not quite right. Don't force it. And that is fine. No need to go mad, no need to open tight and everything, because all you're doing is you're holding the spool in place. So there we go. Another test before we put it completely together. Feels absolutely superb. So we're looking good. And now we'll put the spool on. Again, we've got some lubrication now, put a tiny bit on. Because I think I wiped a bit off. Don't have to go mad, there we go. Uh, you might notice on the Felton Crosswind 2, the later type with the folding handle, there's actually a, a ratchet there. Um, this is a silent drag. They were built like this. The, mark, the, the laters um, had a clicker on the spool, but the, this is a silent drag, so there's nothing missing. This is exactly how it should be. And now we've got to tease this washer on, which they are a tight fit. You don't want to be forcing them on. What you rather want to be doing instead is sort of gently teasing it on by, by, by turning it and hoping that it will go down the threads because you don't want to be breaking one. I mean, you can make them, but um, I prefer the originals myself. It's not a great game killer if you have an issue, but, um, but really, ideally, you want to just be patient tease it down and then we've got the spring loaded washer over the top and then we've got the brass retainer which should if that goes down far enough yeah now we're in the brass retainer then that the uh, the head rotates on one way only, that's it, into the wide groove. And then really it's a case of just tidying up. So we just put the drag washer on, on the drag nut. Okay, so now we've got that working nicely. And one final part. It's an ambidextrous. On goes there. On, you know, that can be swapped over and there we go. There's the retaining nut. And just to give it a little bit of a nip. And we're good to go. That noise is not gears or anything, it's the straight cut gears, as, you know, that's how they are. That's how they originally work. And one rebuilt reel. There we go. There you go, Ross, there's your reel. Andy keeps telling me I'm OCD and he's probably right. Um, so in the previous part that this will be tacked onto, we went from an ovalised and crushed washer, which I've actually glued, had to glue together because it was broken twice, um, decided to make a brand new one. Um, as you know, paper template and something that I mentioned earlier that fits. So if Andy zooms in on the spool, 
Uh, you'll see, there is the washer, and I'm really proud of how it's turned out. A little bit of work with the Dremel. Patience, of course, most people wouldn't bother. So all I'm gonna do now is just finish the reel off to my standards, because I would, you know, if it's not good enough for me, I wouldn't give it, you know, I wouldn't be giving it to anybody else. Um, and that's part of my OCD probably, as Andy will say. But that's the way I roll, so um, now all I've got to do is uh, put it finally back together. And with a bit of luck, it won't be too much of a pain. Oh, goodness me, it's almost, 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 almost. Wow. Yeah, well. Okay, after a brief edit, note to self and everybody else, always make sure that the flat of the shaft is downwards. Um, it's very easy to get it the other way around and all it does basically is it locks the reel up because you've got that little piece of a lip there and you lock the reel up, it won't turn. So it must be on the angled side going down. So you just rotate the reel until the flyer comes into the correct position so that you can put this locking tab in place. And if we're lucky, goodness me, it's gone on again. Well, that's quite amazing. Sorry about the drill in the background, it's beyond our control. It's somebody else, there's always something. But anyway, so now we're starting to see the dog for the rabbit. Again, not too tight because it's brass. Let's check that everything's spinning. Yep. Bail arm action is perfectly fine. Washer on the bottom, lube on the bottom. Bail arm back. And then the washer that we've just made. Look at that. It goes over there beautifully. Super fit. Really, really pleased with that. Exceptionally pleased, to be honest. Now, the other thing is, these. Got to be careful which way you put them on. Um, they get used to being on one way, and if you look, there's a slight radius on one. Easy to miss. Flat part on the bottom, slight radius on the top. Yeah, and then the locking pad. Again, that gap there is too narrow. That gap there is the gap that that fits on. And again, you've got the dish you know, and the smooth, so the flat part again on the bottom, and you've got a slight round on the top. Yeah, and then all it is is a case of putting the drag cap on. Finally, through my OCD, I am working on the therapy. We're good to go. One other thing that um, I did forget to bring anybody's attention to, there should be a half clip, a bit like a bicycle trouser clip, that actually has got a dimple in the bottom. It's a chrome clip and it fits, it clips onto there because this is an oil port um, to oil the shaft. Um, I put grease in it, but it's perfectly fine. It doesn't cause a big issue. Um, sometimes these people pop them off by the riverbank and they lose them. Um, I haven't got a spare one. They're hard to find. Um, probably Gary would have one if I asked, but you know, this, this is ready to go and I'm sure Ross will enjoy fishing with it. So there you go, folks. Finally. It's finished.